Okay, I'm here with Jonathan Mouse from Bike Portland, Bike Portland. Clarence from Street Films, of course, interviewing on the interview here. And uh, this is the 18 year 18 celebration years. of Bike Portland. Well, not this specifically, but yes, this week, this, this, this moment. Time. This time. Yeah. Birthday. Which is funny because I started making street films, what would become street films, in May of 2000. Five. Five. Yeah. So that's my we, 18 year kind of celebration. So we're there kind too. of on the same because I was in April yeah. of 2005. Started posting about bike stuff in Portland. Yeah. What are you doing here? Oh, look at that. We got dual covers. Oh, <laughs> what do you like about Breakfast on the Bridge? It's fun. It makes people smile that ride by. And it may make them less likely to not ride to work. So they, they think about the hot coffee and the pastries. I think I'm just going to ride to work today. It's a lot of fun. People on the bridge are fun, bikers are fun. Yeah. And 18 years later, I'm still doing that. I can't it's believe so we're... You're, you're still know. doing this. Bunch of old guys, we spent half the day just talking about how much our Bikes. bodies hurt. We, we, we hurt. Um, <laughs> you know, this has taken it's, it's toll. I mean, now I've had a number of spills. I've had some injuries. My back hurts. It's dangerous occupation. I can't see as well. I, when I started, had no glasses. Then I had a little bit of glass. Now I have higher powered glasses. My, my daughter's in her second year of college, and she was two when I started. So that that's how I that's how I do it perspective wise. That's that always crazy. blows me away. That's crazy. That always blows me away. And you know and I got I do? got hand tremors now. I got to carry tripods yeah. or or put my camera on top of some thing here, you know, so we could talk. The, the so. weird the weird thing is, right, Clarence? Like if people ever ask you what you do, like I still don't even know how to answer that. <laughs> about you, you or me? Well, just about. I mean, what do we do? We've seen a lot of really cool bridge paths. The Tillicum Bridge in Portland, which carries no car traffic, only transit, cyclists, and pedestrians, has 14 footpaths on either side of the bridge. So that was pretty remarkable when I first saw that. In New York City, we opened the Kosciuszko Bridge recently. That has one 20-foot wide bike and pedestrian path on one side. We have yeah. this really strange, niche thing that we do. We, we document and create content and films and, and, and stories around infrastructure, infrastructure that helps people bike safer yes. and make cities work better. I mean, it's a kind of a weird niche, right? Like, anyway. Welcome to Bike TV. Hello, Bike TV. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I always tell people that they don't understand, I'm like, my work, my hobby, and my exercise are basically all the same thing. Hmm. And that's how, you know, you can do all this all the time, okay. right? Okay. You know, yeah. it's kind of cool. It's kind of like, you know, what my interests are. There's so much that's wrapped up in my life's work and what I do. And especially with you, because you, I, one of the best things, the coolest thing, I mean, you've covered so many cool things, especially in New York. I know you've been all around the world, but the open street stuff. Yeah. You know, and especially in the last couple of years. What is it, 34th Street? 34th, 34th Avenue. 34th Ave. But, you know, there's a lot that's of other fantastic. places all around. There's Barry Street. They're changing that. They're going to make that kind of permanent. There's, there's other seasonal ones like Vanderbilt in uh, Brooklyn, Fifth Avenue in Brooklyn. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. you know, Broadway in Manhattan. When we first started this, mm. it yes. was a car sewer. It was oh. a nonstop car sewer. Now it's so broken up by pocket parks, open streets, two-way streets, uh, innovative treatments that like you can't go from one end to the other mm -hmm. at all. The, the best chance you got is walking or biking, basically. I remember how excited y'all were for that to happen. Yeah. And now you're you're still around, and it's been like now it's just old hat, like that whole Broadway thing, right? That's just old. Yeah. It was that. such a big, big, big victory. Yeah. And right. now people look at it as like you know there was a lot of cranks out there. We love to use the term cranks, That's our new right? Word, cranks. Cranks. People who don't like what's going on. That's <laughs> good for the country and good for your neighbors and the people in New York and now people are like oh old hat you know mm -hmm. you know that's mm -hmm. the way things are supposed to be and you know we really need to do more even that we're doing True. but we're getting there hey folks it's time again bike box bike box bike box green bike box bike box I'm in Portland Oregon where they filled in their bike boxes the delicious color of Kermit green bike box or not to bike box that's the real question I used to actually come to Portland quite often back in the well, 2005, 2008, 2010. Mm. Well, you um, don't come as much anymore. We've been talking about that here yeah. in the last several weeks. I'm old. 
Oh, so you kind of, I was going to say, maybe you don't come as much anymore because we're not necessarily the only city doing this stuff. We're not, well, that's we're not true. way out in front. It used to be, this was like the Petri, this was all kinds of cool stuff happening, right? Yeah. 08, 09, like it was like, yeah. you know, the platinum hey, city. Hey, remember when bike lanes were blue? Yes, blue bike lanes. Blue, yeah. they used to be blue, but sure. that's the, co the color for hospitals now. Yes, it's like 80. So it's and stuff, so. morphed into green, but it's you green. know, I'll never but, forget the leading to the, the Hawthorne Bridge. Blue bike lanes. That's right, blue you bike know? lanes. Fresh Kermit wouldn't have worked. Fresh Kermit. If it was blue, it would have been, uh, would have been. <laughs> I don't know. But you know, because Portland early on, I mean, you know, Portland, maybe Montreal, were like the North America's Ooh. only places to look to. Maybe Minnesota, Minneapolis with the mm. off street trails. And we used stuff. to have a little rivalry going with Minneapolis. Do you? you know, for sure, we did. Back when we had yeah. rivalries on this stuff, now it's kind of past. Yeah. So I mean, you know, a lot is a lot of changed. A lot. Um, yeah. And you know, we were both just riding and talking about, Change. you know, things. We, we haven't been surpassed, but you know, there's a lot of different well, young voices. I, I was going to say we're talking change in terms of cities and infra and this infrastructure, but boy, has there's probably been more in just like our business part of it, which is like media. Yeah. Right? It's just been the whole young thing. kids. Yeah, Out there's there. all kinds of new people doing new things, and we're just kind of like, you know, we're the old guys now. Yeah, there's a guy on TikTok, Everyday Engineering. Good. It turns okay. out that he went to Yukon when I would go up there to teach a class with Norman Garrick's urbanism people, and, uh -huh. and we used to teach people how to make their own street films. And now he's, he's, he's this guy, he's got, he's so popular, he's way popular than I ever was, and he's talking like snack downs and all this other stuff that I was doing too, yeah, you know? Yeah, and neat. it's like, I always wanted that to happen. I thought it would happen not more than five, six years I got into this, you know, because Vimeo got more popular. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody had cell phones, people could shoot video and edit quicker, and it didn't happen. It really kind of happened for me it was around COVID because people started thinking well you know i can do this and that and yeah. also some of us you know the gil penalosas of the world yeah. me you you know we're, we're getting older so they want to have younger yeah, idols for sure for sure you know yeah 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 the platforms also got really really good right and people got to be able to very skilled at using them so uh, i think i agree covid but also people have just become it's a second nature now to uh you know use these platforms to their full potential, right? TikTok and stuff is very, very viral, very, very good at finding audiences. So I'm not good at it, I'm not good at it, but you know, it is. It's good, and all the stuff we've been trying to do now can just be explosively interconnected in terms of getting past to hundreds of thousands, millions of people so much quicker yeah. than anything we could have written, you know, a lot of times, or even videos on YouTube or Vimeo. So. Yeah. That's fantastic. So I just, you know, we were always like, you know, when Streets Blog started, you had been going, you guys kind of exchanged. We thought about you know, being Streets Blog Portland. At one point. Uh, yeah, at yeah. one point. We I found mean, our respective spots, you know what I'm saying? Like, I never wanted to be tied to the advocacy piece of it, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm not a nonprofit, never have been. Yeah. I wanted to be like a, business, a news business, and that's what we are. Yeah. Uh, it's a diff little different, right? We still, there's still an advocacy impact to a lot of the stuff Mike Portland does, but that's not how I don't wake up in the morning and go, how am I going to change everything? I'd be, I'm like, how am I going to do this news business centered around documenting this city and, and making cool stuff and, you know, being creative. That's what really keep, keeps me excited. I love all the change and impact we have yeah. because of our work, you know, but that's not like the primary thing necessarily. It's just wanting to do really good stories and do really good content. That's what yeah. I mean. And I was just saying, you know, you guys, a lot of places that are doing content, they don't have a strong, strong comment community. Like, you know, they'll comment on the things on other postings, like on Reddit or on, on YouTube site yeah, yeah. or on Twitter. But you or guys still have a huge, healthy mm -hmm. debate of, you know, talking about yeah. what's going on in Portland on your site. And it's like pretty rare. There's, there's some, you know, news outlets, big news outlets, they won't have one comment on yeah. their articles. Yeah. I'm super proud of that. I think that's one of the most one of the most important things about what we've done really is like let, have, let the community have that space. But we've always approached I've always approached it like that by saying the stuff I write up here has no more inherent value or prominence necessarily other than it's just on top of the page than yeah. all the stuff that happens in the comments. I just see it as an equal thing. And as you know from doing this a long time, the collective wisdom of all these people that can watch our stuff and interact with our stuff, they're a lot smarter than we are. They, they're they more creative. They, they have different life experiences, right? Yeah. So that's what like having a healthy comment section, we're able to like give voice and light to all that 
without, I mean, that's just part of the site, right? It, it, it adds so many layers and so many cool pieces of value. And can you imagine being like, I always think of the city staff and the bureaucrats and the government people, or, you know, that are able to read through those, right? So we could have, you know, 100, 200 comments on something that's like a, con you know, controversial in the city or maybe a project, right? And you're, you're the person who helped design it or you've worked on it at the city and you can read through all that. It's, they never have that kind of input or feedback. Like right now we had this whole thing, you know, we've been having this problem with the bike, bike numbers going down a little bit in yeah. Portland. And I was talking to a city person a couple days ago and they're like, man, it's just been amazing to read. Every, Cause everything we've written about, it's just been hundreds of comments, right? And so it's just that person that works at the city was like, it's been great to get all that feedback, all that insight and to hear from everybody why they're not biking as much or what their theory is about it. So really fun but yeah the comment section I wanted to ask you about one thing because I find this is true especially on Twitter but you know the whole the young crowd like the kids that are in their teens and yeah. the new urbanist means for transient num -tots. Or the, teens, yeah. the num tots yeah. you know yeah. it's like they want change now like yeah. they don't understand that sometimes it can take years or even decades for some of these projects. And you know, it really shouldn't. We understand that too. Yeah. We also understand there's a process. And there's kids and there's kids and there's young people and there's people angry at me like, oh, you said um, this bike lane was a good enough start. I totally you know, know it's like, you no, we, they're, 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 and they're impatient. And you know what, that's good. Cause we kind of need that. Yes. You need that momentum yes. and that emotion yeah. because that's really helping change the government while we kind of or, uh, take a little step back. But you feel like you've changed though over time. You used to be more like those younger people were, right? You were probably yeah. less patient. When I you were starting less patient, but I'm still more patient now than they. Than you think they will be? They will I ever catch be. myself doing that too. I catch myself yeah. saying my first reaction to someone who's commenting or replying, and I know they're younger. I'm like, hey. I, want, I feel like I'm telling them, like, hey, this is actually how it's going to work, right? right? Yeah. I've been here. I've seen this stuff. And then I think to myself, oh, my gosh, wait a second. I can't, you can't be, uh, you know, watering down that enthusiasm. you got to be really careful about that. Yeah. But at the same time, I think we do have that thing we can share with those folks, right? And say, hey, here's kind of, our, from our experience, this is probably the playing field that's going to be happening, right? This is yeah. what yeah. may happen next. So, yeah, I think about that a lot. Like, I, because I love... Uh, anytime there's new activism, a new group starting, like I want to be right there. I want to be in the meetings. I want to talk to them. I find it so Does it just fire rewarding. Does it fire like? Absolutely. Yeah. And it also helps me understand like what my role can be as I continue to feel like, I'm always asking myself, you know, after 18 years and all the change in the city and the advocacy and the infrastructure and the media and everything, it's like, how can I continue to be personally and as Bike Portland as valuable as possible to the community? Like what can I bring? To the I also like find that? myself doing more films these days trying to explain it like explain the treatments and explain to people mm. why things cer certain things happen like one thing I find interesting is that people will be like okay they come in a, a street or an intersection and they'll put out the cones and the little yellow paint and maybe a maybe an armadillo or two or whatever and you know maybe a planter or two to slow people down and like it's really meant to either first study or it's for something that's going to come later mm. because that's right. quick and they want to get it quicker lighter, cheaper. There's people like, why aren't there fucking curbs up here? Why aren't there like, why don't they have the light change? Why don't they mm. stop the turns here? Why don't they do this? Why don't they make it fully protected with barriers? And I'll, I'll try to say to them, look, you know, this is when I feel like, oh, I'm an old guy. Yeah, right. right. I'm like, like, you realize they can either do 20 intersections like this yeah, right. for that money or just one. Yeah. And I would rather have and they, 20. And then done can, fast and then they go back and change them and fill them in. Yeah, but then I bet they respond to you like, well, Clarence, but you're, you're assuming they don't have enough money, but they don't have money because they're not spending it in the right place. Like, you should yep. never, yep. never, never just think that we don't have money. Like, you're part yeah. of the problem. Yeah, I know. That's happening. It's a that's tough happens. place to be because, like, you kind of know the inner workings more than a lot of these people right. for being around it for so long. Yeah. So, like, you know, you're like, okay, well, I know that the DOT, whatever city, they're not just going to well, drop what they're doing and do it differently because they also have people they got to answer to. They've got certain budgets. You ever think that, um, uh, like one thing I think about is like, I remember being that younger person in the community and getting uh, frustrated with people that talked like you and I talk now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and I actually have some regret about... I never write people off. I don't. I always respect people. But I, there were people in the community that were older when I was starting, that I think I could have been different with, and like, you know, really embraced more and like appreciated more. But because they were the ones saying that kind of stuff, and I was so gung ho, I was like, ah, they're not really, 
you know, yeah. we gotta get, yeah. we gotta move past that. Yeah. Like we gotta, yeah. we're gonna change everything. And yeah. by, by 2010, this whole city's gonna be 40% bike share. Like I, that was crazy. I thought everything was just gonna change, right? Yeah. And now I think back, I'm like, man, I would love to sit down with those folks and just be like, <laughs> can we talk and like t share your wisdom? So like there was so much, you know, I could have been a lot more humble, I think. I sure. Think about that, you know, just about, uh, I would, yeah. And, and you know, I, I, I also find myself like, you know, in comment section on Facebook or Twitter, there's people who just yell back at somebody immediately like, well, just get on a bike, it's that easy. Oh, yeah. Or like, you know, whatever. And I, I understand not everybody can bike. And I understand there are people that need cars and there's people that have great uses for cars. But you should also have to pay a price for that car ownership, whether it's yeah. how much it costs or how much the gas tax is or how fast you can go mm -hmm. and getting trip tickets and congestion pricing if you're going to decide to be a car owner uh, yeah. in New York or wherever and then you know the opposite you have to be able to support everything else whether it's bike share bike lanes buses bus rapid transit new rail lines you got to be able to support the whole mm -hmm. enchilada if you're going to if you're going to drive your car and insist on it you have to support everything that's a solution yeah so. I sometimes find myself like fantasizing that I could be like an activist and doing this in, in a place like where you're at in New York City. Just because the dynamics are, I feel so perfect for it. Because <laughs> you could legitimately tell people, why the hell are you driving? Right? But we can't actually say that here because driving's easy. Yeah. You can do it everywhere. It's a much more Parking reasonable choice. Parking here is not such a big deal. It's not a big deal. You know, there's just people who want to be against things. Yeah. Because they're like, there's one woman who's always commenting, oh, tell me, what the, Show me another country in uh, you know the world that has five boroughs and the islands and like the difficulties and it's like, well then let's not do anything. Let's yeah. just never do anything, right? right? right. And then, and that doesn't work either, yeah. you know. So anyway, yeah. we should wrap this up. Yes. Apologies to if you're hearing the basketball tournament going on behind us, but you know, this is it's kind a, of the street. We just wanted to do this right. for you guys and. Uh, Hopefully you might enjoy some of this. <laughs> but congratulations on 18 years. You too, years. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on yeah, 21 got overall, right? Bike TV, Bike TV, 2001, 2002. I yeah. mean, that's yeah. just amazing. And yeah. you're still out there holding videos. I got some action shots of him today, so I'm, I'm really I'm I've always got, to get And those. I've got a great impersonation of Gil Penalosa of you in 2008 on Sunday Parkways in Portland. <laughs> this is fantastic. I think it's great what Portland is doing on the Sunday Parkways. As you can see here, we have everybody, the, the young children, older people. This is fantastic. I think it's spectacular that Portland is doing the Sunday Parkways. My only problem is, I think it should be every Sunday. They need to do this every week of the month for the rest of the summer. That was like one of my favorite times ever. That was, that like, was a great moment. That was a great, that was one of the first best Ciclovias in the United States, and it was which happened right after I went in 2007. December debuted my Ciclovia film, and that's when a whole bunch of cities just decided yep. we'll finally do it. San Francisco, New York, you guys, Chicago, yep. a lot of other cities. Your film was key to our thing starting. That's what I've been told from some people. And the Bo and the Bogota thing, like, was a direct Bogota model was. of that. That's why I was so glad you got the impersonation. I got to get back down to Bogota. Anyway, yeah. okay, we got to go. Thanks. Sorry, we got work right. to do. Bye. Bye. All right.